Hey, lieutenants. And I'm like, hey, why you, why you? I'm still in bed. That's because I'm. I got my coffee. So. Coffee as always in the morning. And yes, this is uh, from Pulp Fiction. It's the original post poster that was at the Mall of America. My buddy of mine got that. So, uh, in any case, we got a video request. <clears throat> hey, Cappy, I just sent $25 donation via PayPal. I was pleased to see you wearing that Putin shirt in a recent vid. And I also noticed you made a very positive reference to Bioshock Infinite in another recent vid. You even compared sex to it, as well as the bee's knees. As a longtime admirer of Putin and detractor of a drunken puppet of a predecessor, Yeltsin, I agreed with your recent vid on the theoretical President Clary and his advocacy of an alliance between U.S. and Russia. Uh, as a devoted player of Bioshock Infinite, an admirer of Arini's great video reviewing it from last year, I'm always interested in hearing other fans explain how immersive and provocative it is. Only you can determine the value of your time, but I'd appreciate it if you'd make a 5-10 to 10 minute video on either the merits of a U.S.-Russia alliance um, to explain things to your listeners who may have been put off by your position, as you predicted in your recent vid, or your take on the merits of Bioshock Infinite as a game. Uh, we'll, we'll skip Bioshock Infinite because it's a cool game. Go play it. It really is a... I'm not a big a fan of it as a Rini, but it's definitely worth your time. It, it was, it, it was, I would say, revolutionary in some regards. It was very good. Uh, but let's talk about the Russian-U.S. alliance here. Uh, for those who, who were not aware of it, someone had a request like, what would President Clary do? And one of the things is I'd have a U.S.-Russian alliance. And actually, uh, uh, Vincent, who sent in the request here, I have not seen a lot of people get all upset about my advocacy for U.S.-Russian alliance because I, I don't think it really is insulting. Maybe people disagree uh, with Putin, and the only reason I really have that shirt with Putin because it pisses off leftists and other right people. I'm not even an advocate. I, I, I like some things about Putin, uh, but yeah, I, I think he's corrupt and all this other stuff. But it's it's a whole other argument. He's an interesting character, and so um, just wearing that shirt is controversial enough. I'll wear that before I wear a fucking Shape of Era shirt. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> the larger point is I don't think uh, people are upset or would get upset with the U.S. Uh, Russian uh, alliance. Because it, it, any kind of alliance where you're not fighting or at each other's throats or um, uh, antagonizing one another, uh, it, it's good, you know. I don't know if you'd want to have a, an alliance with North Korea, um, you know, like places that are really evil. But um, I wanted to go through some of the merits then of, you know, of a U.S.-Russian alliance and then, and then kind of a, a why, um, <clears throat> you know, differences aside, U.S. and Russia should, they really should be... We should be friends, um, given history and all these other things. Um, <clears throat> so the benefits, some of the merits. One, there's there's no war, and we also have what's called a peace dividend. Um, this was more pronounced, say, in the Cold War, where we were there was the arms race. It was very expensive, and there were hot wars where the U.S. and Russia were indirectly, or the Soviet Union were indirectly fighting each other. Say Vietnam, uh, Laos, um, what else? Uh, Cuba. Um, any, any of the, you know, foreign intervention where, where, you know, we could even say Afghanistan, you know, we're helping out <clears throat> the Bin Ladens fight the, the Russians in, uh, in Afghanistan. So in either case, uh, but we have never directly felt, but there were still costs. And so um, anytime you can have peace, as long as you're not, you know, owning or it's some disadvantage to the other uh, um, country, uh, you know, yeah, it's kind of nice. We don't have to have... Um, 18 aircraft carriers. We don't need nuclear arsenals that can blow up the world eight times over. So um, there's there's that peace dividend that comes with not being at war. Uh, so there's that. That there's also trade. There's there'd be huge economic trade. Not that we already don't have this to a certain extent, but again, we have like Gazprom and the corruption over in Russia. Um, they're, they're just not reaching their potential. And if we had like truly open and free trade, there's that whole Ukraine thing that kind of made me well. <laughs> Um, whether you agree with it or not, or know what Putin was doing or not, the, the, we we did put economic sanctions on Russia. They're now out of the G8. Uh, but again, if we if we had an alliance, and you know, there, we, you would have more trade. Um, tourism would be another thing. I have this stupid dream of uh, that we'd build a bridge across the Bering Strait so I could motorcycle ride all the way to Europe. Um, I looked into it. It's prohibitively expensive. There's like nothing in our the Bering Strait, I think it's, what, 800 miles to, from the closest road to the Bering Strait in, in the United States, and I think it's 1,500 miles from Russia's closest road to the Bering Strait. So it's like, 
total estimated cost for like $200 billion. Like, it would never happen. Uh, but I just, I think if we could go to Russia, I mean, especially Eastern Russia, like there's tons of mountains out there. I would love to check out Siberia um, and, and just, you know, go explore. But it's it's just not developed enough out there. I mean, it, it, I've, I've read some stories about driving across Russia. The, the roads are horrible. I think with tourism, though, you could have better roads. You'd have more investment. You have people wanting to go out there. And and, and the, a camaraderie or a friendship would uh, form between the the U.S. and the or Americans and Russians people. Um, so those are those are the benefits. I, I you know we, we now why I think it's possible. Um, and I don't want any historians coming in and well technically it's not, I don't want your technicalities. I'm, I know Russia is a big ass country with what 150 million, 130 million people, and <clears throat> different types of people. There's Asians, there's Middle Easterners, there's white people. I got it. I got it. I'm just saying Russia in general is a Western civilization country. We are a Western civilization country for now. Um, that means we have more in common, uh, especially after the fall of the Soviet Empire. Uh, with each other than, than we think. Um, also, uh, I like Putin for one thing, and that is he is for Russians. There is no doubt about who he is for. Um, he is for protecting the Russian culture, the Russian language. He had a great quote about, no, we do not need diversity. We do not need, uh, I think he was talking about Islam or saying, like, if you, if you need to come here, we don't need you. And you will respect our laws. You will be Russian. And so <clears throat> the guy actually stands for sovereignty and integrity in that one regard. And he's willing to invade and throw down to the mat to do it, to protect it. Uh, so there's that. Um, also, the American and Russian peoples, especially even though we were enemies uh, in the Cold War, we were both for scientific progress in advancing and, and beating the other person. And I think even though it was to outdo and, and guarantee the demise of the other one, um, that kind of uh, competition... Uh, made us more allies than we think. Um, we, you know, They're always trying to build faster, better jets. We're always trying to you know, the arms race there. Um, <clears throat> always trying to beat, like, I think they they beat us to color television. Oh, wait, no, we beat them to color television. And then, what's his name? He made Nixon look like a doofus. I forgot. Um, but anyway, we have this past history where we were competing. And uh, I don't know if there's a military term for it, but we're, you know, former... Um, enemies actually become friends because they have that that thing in common. Um, regardless, it is you you the Russians. You know they're not like oh let's just collect money and live off of the no. We're, I mean they they want to achieve. They it's not like a, a second or third world country. Where it's like oh we're piss poor. And we we need handouts. Please help us, Western nations. They don't they don't worry about that. They they want to achieve on their own. Um, another thing, we have never actually fought in each other directly. The United States and Russia have never, I, I looked it up and, and one historian did point out, we, we did back in World War One, like have a skirmish in uh, the Vladivostok area. <clears throat> Very interesting, even though we sent troops out that far. Um, but uh, we've, we've really never been at war with each other. I know indirectly through Vietnam, and I know there's some historian technicality is going to, well, they have to delete this one time, is We've never had a war. Now, I don't know about you, but if you haven't ever had a war with a country, I mean, I'm trying to think, we've been at war with pretty much everybody else except Russia? I don't know. I think uh, that says something. You know, despite all the ideological differences between the Soviet Union and, and the United States, it never came to blows, did it? Well, you know, we might want to think about that. Uh, and then, finally, uh, between culture, people... History, the American and Russian people really aren't that different. I know some people would say the Russian people are a little, um, I don't want to say backwards, but um, they're different. You know, you look at the history like, well, they're, they're, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not that they're backward. I mean, they came kicking and screaming with Peter the Great, um, dragging them into, into Europe. But because of that, they, they were integrated. Um, they were Europeanized. They were Western civilizationized. Um, and th there are differences, but there's not that much. I mean, you talk to, we get Russian immigrants here. You know what? They like to make money. Uh, they like to drink. They like to have sex. They like to do things Americans do. You know, this one guy, Alexei, not not of uh, um, academic freedom fame. 
uh, another f a friend of mine, he was a dance dance student of mine. He's lexing it. Ah, it is great to be in a man. He just loved it. He had snakeskin shoes. Dude was happier than shit. Ended up marrying a fat Latina woman. Happier than a pig in mud. He, he was just a happy. And he, he's like, you know, he wants to live. He wants to enjoy life. And, and it's like, yeah, that's... that's <laughs> he's a particularly happy Russian. But anyway, um, I don't think, you know, when they come here, I don't think I've ever met a Russian I didn't like. Um... You know, and and they're and they're professionals. I mean, now I know that if they're over here, they're probably scientists or something. They're probably smarter than the average bear. I'm just saying, uh, it is they are very much for progress. They are very much like um, you know traditional classic Americans, you know, of Western civilization. They like to make progress. They like to achieve excellence. I think they are for independence, and they're not. Woe is me. Send me a government check. So I think that's. Um, that's there. Anyway, so I think, you know, the merits and benefits of a U.S.-Russian alliance is obvious, but it's the, um, it's the why and the reason I think that's possible, which behooves the question. I don't even know, I don't know why uh, we're, we're not as friendly as we should be, frankly. So, but anyway, that's the reasons I thought and, and just kind of, you know, hopefully before I die, they build that $200 billion bridge across and I can drive my motorcycle to Europe. Toodles.